The End was, uh, I think, a, a different approach in, in terms of songwriting for The Doors, whereas, you know, they always had that rule where songs didn't have to be uh, a certain time to get on the radio. And if it was a long song, then who cares, you know? And it, very atmospheric. Uh, and it shows the skill of Robbie Krieger as a, as a guitarist as well, that, you know, he, the style that he had was, he could, it's like he could adapt to anything, you know? This is the end. My only friend, the end of our elaborate plans, the end. It's not a rock and roll beat. The end is, uh, you know, up on here we. That would that was on the cymbals. It's this slow, moody kind of thing. It's not. Come on, baby, you know, and. Uh, Although I saw heads bobbing up and down out there, so I knew we were on to something. Kind of a, a bizarre song. Parts of the song talk about a child who murders his father and then has a, a sexual relationship with the mother. Father? Yes, son. I want to kill you. Get out. You are no longer the house band at my bar. What the hell are you singing about? This is the end. The end was, uh, to me, kind of like when the music's over part one. Uh, it was just sort of a hint of things to come, uh, you know, from Jim Morrison and the things that were inside his head. Kind of a twisted song, really long song, probably the longest song of its time, you know, at, the, at that time. Uh, but kind of a twisted song, both lyrically and musically. I mean, you could be high on drugs, but you really didn't need to to listen to it. It was just one of those way out there kind of songs that we started to hear a lot more of after that from Jim Morrison and the Doors. Yeah, love, laughter, and soft lies. Yeah, of night, sweet, shy. This is the I think at the time, when their first album came out in 19, late 1966, early 67, I mean, the, the drug influence was, was all throughout rock music. And I think that uh, it would be difficult to say that that didn't have an influence on their music. Um, I'm certainly, uh, marijuana was in use at the time. I think though more with Jim Morrison, it was mostly the alcohol fueled uh, that uh, sort of drove him. But uh, I think definitely uh, the drugs probably did play a big part. Maybe at the first part it added some influence and flavor and maybe in some points it actually hurt the music quite a bit. It was almost impossible for the Doors to, to follow up arguably one of the best debuts in, in rock history, but I think they did it with Strange Days. Uh, released within the calendar year of 1967, this was back in the days when rock bands would put out material at a torrid pace. Um, so 10 months later they come out with Strange Days. Um, a lot of people say there was no way it could live up to the, you know, the bar that was set by the debut, but I think it did. It has some, some great door staples on it and it's a fantastic record cover on it was a very different throwaway from what the first album was where you had these images especially Morrison's image which took up half the album cover and on Strange Days the door said we don't want to be on the album cover but then finally they relented when Electra said well you have to be on it somewhere so in the very back corner there's a poster of the doors like it's a concert poster so it's really funny that they were they knew they were very big and popular but here they were trying to take a step back kind of <laughs>
Love Me Two Times is one of those Doors staples. It has everything. I think the neatest part is that it has a harpsichord solo from Ray Manzarek. Throwing in that, just what the Doors did, they took what was pretty much a straight ahead song and they added just a little bit of, you know, obscurity to it. And they throw in a harpsichord solo, Ray Manzarek, who was fantastic on the keys as always. But I think that he, every member of the band brought something to the Doors music and that was Ray Manzarek's moment to shine, I believe. I think it's got a lot of really good feel to it. And, um, you know, it's got some neat keyboarding in there. It's got some neat drum rolls. Uh, of course, it's got a bit of screaming from Jim Morrison. And it's a very good single, you know, in, in less than three minutes, you got a really good song that has lots of power and lots of energy. So if you listen to the lyrics in that song, you'll notice that Morrison drops off the S. It has sort of a double meaning. Love me two time. Listen to it. I think you'll agree. Love me two time. The riff for Love Me Two Times is based around a, an E, an E chord, and um, he's basically using the, the open strings in between. So, uh, but it's the way he's, he's putting him, it just makes a great riff, so the main riff goes. And what he was doing there was just moving up to like an A major shape. And then it's the, um, the bridge bit um, using a lot of seventh chords, so it goes to a D. D7. C7. And what I was doing there was just a run G, D7, which is giving it that ring, C7 and B7 rather than using straight chords, which would have just sounded normal, you know. He's using that. Which is, the Doors used a lot of that, you know, I think because of the, um, to complement the, the keyboard perhaps. Love Me Two Times, obviously a, a huge hit for The Doors, one of their biggest ever, some would say. Uh, but it's almost intriguing to, to imagine what could have been. Because the song was doing well on the charts, this was of course at the time when The Doors were a, a huge live draw. Jim Morrison, the infamous bust in New Haven, Connecticut. The song was steadily rising on the charts at the time, and funnily enough, it uh, enjoyed a sharp decline afterwards. Uh, so I, I, you know, it's almost, that's one of those things you would love to, what if? if? If he hadn't been busted, what would have happened to Love Me Two Times? But then again, maybe the doors wouldn't have been the doors if he didn't get busted. So it's probably best to leave it the way it happened in history. At that point, the Doors uh, started to do some more what they wanted as opposed to what was sort of expected of them. With the Strange Days album, I believe this was the first album that Jim Morrison actually broke out in poetry, rap. He was very sincere about that. It's just like the music stopped and they decided, let this man say his words. People are strange when you're a strange. Faces look ugly when you're alone. Women sing wicked when you're not wanted. Streets are empty when you're down. When you're strange, faces come out of the rain. When you're strange, no one remembers your name. When you're strange, when you're strange, when you're. Strange. 
The way uh, People Are Strange works is it's basically based around two chords, which are E minor and A. But instead of, of Robbie Krieger playing it just like... He's doing all these intricate parts in between. So it's almost like he's playing the, the bass as well. And I think that's something to do, obviously, with the fact in the early days they didn't have a bass player as such. So he's trying to fill out everything he can by doing bass runs as well with all the all those bits in between of playing the guitar. So it's kind of like he's playing two instruments, you know.